Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video I have got you test results of this mini ITX motherboard from AliExpress. This one is 100B660M mini ITX motherboard. The motherboard comes in this box. And on my secondary channel you can find quick specs overview as well as unboxing of this motherboard if you would be interested. For now, I would like to mention that this motherboard I have bought with my personal money because for some reason Juan Andre decided not to provide me this motherboard for review. They sent me to wait for some unknown manager to approve my request and it just took way too long and I just decided to buy the motherboard with my own money. So, regarding the motherboard, just like the Huanan G H610 motherboard that I have tested some time ago, this one just works. But previously I made a very short video saying that basically everything works and you don't need to worry about it. And some people didn't quite understand that I have actually tested the motherboard and performed all the detailed testing to conduct my results, and they thought that I just did a quick motherboard overview. So in this case, I'm going to actually go step by step and tell you about all the detailed test results or at least the most important ones. Of course all the technical specification and everything I have tested you will find by the end of this video in my slides. For now let's go through this uh, little printout where I have the most important inf information. Of course I have to start with the most important part the VRM and the motherboard has the same 8-phase controller as the Huanan G H610 motherboard. But unlike Huanan G H610 motherboard, this one comes with the 10 pairs of MOSFETs. I'm not quite sure how they designed it, but we have a kind of 7 plus 3 design and we have 10 pairs in total, while the controller supports only 8 phases, so I'm not quite sure how the design works, because I'm not an electrician, but what I can tell you is that this VRM works really well. Testing with my i7-12700K with 8064 stress test, after half an hour I have got less than 70 degrees Celsius when measuring with the external thermometer, uh, the VRM zone and the VRM radiator. I can also say that the motherboard provides some sort of thermal readings to the HW monitor and the value seems to be kinda right, so you can monitor the motherboard VRM temperature using HW monitor and other software. The VRM radiators are mounted with 0.5mm thermal pads. These thermal pads are extremely fragile and if you will try to remove the radiators from the VRM you will destroy these thermal pads. Thus, if for some reason you decide to remove the radiators from the motherboard, I strongly recommend you to buy replacement thermal pads first. I have done all my testing before removing the radiators, so the results are demonstrating the performance of the motherboard out of the box. Thus, you can leave the motherboard as is and it will work just fine. A part of the ADA64 stress test, I have also done Cinebench R23 tests. And I have tested Cinebench R23 with i7-12700K and i 513400 I looked at the CPU frequency to make sure that the CPU frequency is not jumping up and down and the CPU is stable. I have also validated the CPU score. So with i7-12700K with the Huanan G motherboard, I scored 22,824 points. Hardware unboxed or text port report 22,784 points. So my i7 running on this Huanan G motherboard scores slightly higher than what hardware unboxed found under the testing. And this means that Huanan G B660M ITX motherboard does not throttle i7-12700K in any way. The same picture can be found with the i5-13400. Running on this B660M IDX motherboard, my CPU scores 16,085 points, and checking online scores, I have got 15,911 points. So the gap is slightly more than 100 points, which means that the CPU is not throttled in any way. The next important point to cover is the memory performance and memory settings. Huanan G B660M ITX motherboard has bias features to overclock memory, adjust memory timings and enable XMP profile. So everything works here. Unfortunately, I do not have any memory that is guaranteed to work at DDR4-3600 or DDR4-3400. My G-Skill modules are rather old and I tried to overclock them rather hard in the past, so now they refuse to work with anything higher than DDR4-3200. But at least in the BIOS we have all the required features. 
regarding the voltage regulation with Quantum G B660M ITX, we do not have an option to input voltage manually. We have to pick one of the suggested values with a step of 0.05 volts. I think it is good enough, but still it is not as good as we could see with those expensive branded MSI, ASUS or Gigabyte motherboards. It's also next to impossible to verify that the memory voltage settings are actually working. But what I can say for sure is that my memory does not work with XMP settings running at the stock 1.2 volts. So I can conclude that at least 1.35 volts is possible with this motherboard. And hopefully 1.4 or even 1.45 volts should be doable as well. The last important part to cover is the PCI Express layout and configuration. The motherboard comes with a single PCI Express X16 slot, and this X16 slot runs at PCI Express 4.0 speed. We also have an M.2 slot to install SSD drives, and this one also works at PCI Express 4.0 speed with bandwidth X4, so this is a very good configuration. Unfortunately, the M.2 slot would not work with the SATA SSDs, so you need an NVMe SSD drive. We also have an M.2 slot for Wi-Fi expansion cards, and this M.2 slot is limited to Intel CNVI Wi-Fi modules. Unfortunately, the standard PCI Express M.2 Wi-Fi adapters are not working here. It's also worth mentioning that it's a nightmare to install M.2 Wi-Fi modules into the supplied box to get Wi-Fi exits. The box is just a bit too small and the wires are a bit too rigid and they constantly want to jump off the Wi-Fi module and it's simply not enough space to route it properly. I hope in the future they will figure out a better solution, but for now we have what we have. Finally, for the conclusion, what can I say about Huanan G B660M Mini IDX motherboard? Overall, the motherboard is pretty decent, and we can see that Huanan G products are getting better and better with each year. My score for the motherboard would be 8 out of 10, and right now on AliExpress you can find it for about 9200 euros. Still, the motherboard has its downsides. For example, just like any other Chinese motherboard, it is not possible to use smartphone function with a 3-pin voltage-regulated fans. If you would like to adjust your fan speed, you need 4-pin PWM fans. But at least with this motherboard, it is possible to set up smartphone function separately for the CPU fan and the chassis fan. The motherboard also comes without a Wi-Fi adapter, and I would say that we have too few USB ports at the rear I.O. If Huanangji would be able to add a couple more USB ports, I would say it would be perfect. The last thing I could complain about is the BIOS. Yes, we have good graphical UI, and yes, we have all required features, and yes, they are working. Still, the BIOS is not as good as uh, MSI, Gigabyte, or ASUS BIOS. In particular, the memory configuration settings are a bit confusing and might be tricky to figure out how you use them. Also, the motherboard is not very good at recovering from incompatible settings. For example, if I try to overclock the memory or tighten the memory timings and I push over the limit, the motherboard would not go into the recovery mode and let me readjust the settings. Instead, it would boot with the default settings with the DDR4-2400 and go straight into the BIOS. Nevertheless, all in all, as I have said, it's a pretty decent motherboard. Whether to buy it or not to buy it is your personal decision. In my opinion, as always, you need to first check your local stores, then you check your second-hand market, and only after that, if you can't find any good deal, you can go to AliExpress. With this, I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and helpful. Bye for now.